I'd like to call the meeting to order. Mrs. Burns, roll call, please. Mr. Sullivan? Present. Mr. Parentano and Mr. Allen are both absent with prior notice. Mrs. Bowman? Here. Ms. Boyle? Uh, here. Mr. Feather? Here. Mrs. Hallenbeck? Present. Mr. Kovitz? Here. Mr. Marriton? Here. Quorum is present. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The board met in executive session this evening prior to this meeting to discuss matters of employment. The district mission statement. In the Chamonix community builds futures by empowering each child to become a productive citizen and a lifelong learner. Mrs. Burns, any announcements? No announcements. Thank you. Mr. Jones, superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. The um, facilities and planning committee had its last regularly scheduled meeting recently, just the other week. Uh, but there are two special meetings I want to highlight, one coming up next week, May 29th. Uh, there are a couple of odd projects that they're still discussing, but the main focus for the May 29th meeting will be the Sundance demographic study. Uh, that's being conducted this year. And the final report's going to be given to the committee at that time. That meeting on May 29th will be held here in this boardroom, and it's a 6.30 meeting May 29th. Uh, the second meeting of the Facilities and Planning Committee is going to take place on Thursday, June 6th. That's going to be at the Pequessing Middle School, and the topic of the Verizon Communication Tower on Pequessing's property is going to be the, part, the, the main and only focus of conversation at that time. So just for people who are looking to have conversation with board members on either of those topics, those are upcoming specialized meetings for the Facilities and Planning Committee. Uh, we have a district, our annual district art show. We're in competition with it right now. We see all of you chose us. Uh, thank you. Uh, but the art show is a phenomenal place to be. Tomorrow night it continues. And so if you have an opportunity to get out tomorrow to see the work from students across the district, all 10 of our schools, it's a, it's a very impressive room to be in at the gymnasium over at the high schools I encourage you to attend that's a seven to nine event this evening and again tomorrow uh, a lot in my report this uh, month or this meeting regarding outside activities our kids have been able to get out even though the weather has been a little hit and miss but more recently we've been hitting some nice days but even in the tough days kids were out on our on the lake practicing some of what they've done in the middle school swim program and the uh, with the canoes and the paddle boards. Uh, but also, we've had a lot of walkathons. We raised money at Pequesson Middle School, $4,200, going to the Gift of Life and Easter Seals in memory of uh, Mrs. Palu uh, Pahulik's daughter. Uh, that's a second annual event that took place at Pequesson. Here at Maple Point for two years now on Mother's Day, they've organized a specialized walk to benefit the Barkan family, Healing Hearts. Uh, the high school took some time out to recognize the donation of the school scoreboard by the Armour family, and uh, that was a nice opportunity to do that. Here at uh, this facility, we had a district-wide stand-up Neshaminy Sunset Challenge, a 5K run and a 2K race for our younger participants. Uh, I guess anybody could participate in the 2K if you didn't want to go the full 5K. Uh, but it was a wonderful event. We had uh, Representative Frank Farry here, as well as... Bucks County District Attorney Matt Wantrob, uh, they spoke beforehand. The focus there was on the trying to combat the opioid use uh, of youth, especially, and uh, that that's a real strong effort on our part with our Stand Up Neshaminy initiative, and that's a special event that I'm sure is going to repeat next year again. Challenger Baseball. The Challenger Baseball Program, the Bucks County Challenger Baseball Program, runs at the high school on Sundays during spring. Uh, it happens very quietly. Uh, and, and many people may not even know that this happens. It's an amazing program that pairs special needs athletes with high school athletes, including many of the Neshaminy High School baseball and girls softball team members, and for a series of weekend clinics. Uh, we have a, a teacher here, Sandy Spong, who uh, runs that program for our kids and was the recipient, the group's the recipient of a $1,000 uh, award from Mikhail's Care Community Award, and so uh, they'll be able to do some really nice things with that $1,000. And then finally, uh, Sandberg was out with a bike to school event recently. A lot of faculty members, a lot of administrators, some support staff uh, joining our kids in a bike to school initiative. We're going to talk about the school budget tonight. The high school's having senior awards coming up. 
Uh, we had a really nice, friendly rivalry between the Tawanka faculty and support staff and the Bucks in a softball game. Uh, Tawanka would like you to know that they did lend two players as Buck beat them uh, nine to eight, so that they want to take some credit for the win. Uh, but it was a great opportunity after school. It's like the old days. My father was a teacher for 30 years. He tells me they used to do those kinds of things much more frequently. We move a lot faster today. But it was a nice opportunity for our adults who enjoy working with our kids to take some time to be with each other. And so the Buck Elementary faculty and the Tawanka faculty did that one afternoon recently. Uh, Neil French is a teacher here, and many of our teachers across the district support our efforts to, to live up to our mission statement, the We Build Futures motto that's part of that mission statement. And so he's taken it upon himself to organize uh, some career opportunities for students during lunchtime, and he brings speakers in for them to hear from. So recently, he had the general manager from the Trenton Thunder, and also attorney, District Attorney Matt Wantrop. It seems like he's making a regular visit here out to the district, but he too shared his experiences with our Maple Point youth. And many of our schools are doing similar types of career opportunities, explorations for our, our students at the early ages, as early as our elementary schools as well. Uh, that's all I have, other than I do want to say early in the meeting, and make it said again, that our June, our regular June meeting is going to need to shift. So originally scheduled for June 18th, the regular meeting of the board needs to be switched to June 25th. So I just want to alert the public to that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And that brings us to our presentation tonight, which is the sixth annual Neshaminy School District Award for Excellence. And I'll turn it back to Mr. Jones. And actually, our two district curriculum uh, directors are going to be the MCs for our event. So Dr. McGee is going to start, and Michelle Buckholder. And yes. Thank you, Mr. Jones. The 2019 <coughs> Teacher Awards for Excellence are given in four categories: innovation, leadership, community partnership, and the spirit of the Shamany. Each recipient of these awards tonight will be honored at a school board meeting, hence our presence. Receive the awards you see in front of you. Receive $1,500 for classroom supplies, and their name will be included in the Award of Excellence plaque behind Mr. Sullivan here. Our first category is innovation. The qualities include the development of educational materials, implementing instructional strategies, innovative lesson design, measuring student outcomes, embracing new ideas and change in the classroom, and enhancements in feedback to students. The 2019 recipient is Mrs. Tracy Capecci. <clears throat> As a math teacher at Neshaminy High School, Mrs. Capecci has taken technology and the one-to-one -one initiative to the next level. She's created Capecci's Corner. And you ask, what's in Capecci's Corner? In Capecci's Corner is a digital version of every problem that she's worked in class for that day, every day, over the entire year. So students can use their devices at home and can their parents to have any time, anywhere access to what happened in class to help them. Tracy Capecci. The second award this evening is for leadership. Leadership qualities include resource provider, instructional specialist, curriculum specialist, classroom supporter, learning facilitator, mentor, data coach, learner, catalyst for change, and serves on committees. The leadership award is being presented to two teachers this evening. The first leadership award is being presented to Mrs. Cynthia Ritchie. <coughs> As a second grade teacher at Walter Miller Elementary School, Cynthia excels at each quality listed under leadership. She serves on multiple committees, is a mentor to both students and staff, and is a technology advocate in her classroom, the school in which she works, and the district. Good leaders must lead by example, and there is no doubt that Mrs. Ritchie is doing this on a daily basis. Cynthia is making a difference in education through her leadership.
The second recipient in the category of leadership, Mrs. Christine Richardson. You can come. As a science teacher at Pequesig Middle School, Chris has not only excelled in all the categories that Michelle just mentioned in the realm of leadership, but to me was given an immeasurable compliment by principal of Pequesig Middle School, Mrs. Holland. In a conversation between Mrs. Holland and I, Mrs. Holland said, and I quote, I could not run Pequesig without Chris's help. What do you call a person who is invaluable to an or organization but has no official title? We call them a leader. Thank you, Chris. Our next category is Spirit in a Chamonix. The qualities include acts as a role model for sustaining positive school culture, encouragement student, encar did they break the award? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just took it apart, I'm sorry. Don't, don't no, no, just, yeah, look, don't, don't look behind the curtain. We got this, we got this. The qualities we, can, we continue. Encouraging students to pursue excellence, promoting skills and enthusiasm to make a difference in the world promotes participation in after-school activities, and encourages students to broaden their horizons. The 2019 Spirit of the Chamonix Award, Mr. Chuck Deal. I thought Mr. Deal was coming to the podium to speak. As you know, Mr. Deal is known as the voice of Neshaminy High School. Over the past two decades, Mr. Deal's voice and his presence are embedded in people's memories of Neshaminy, whether it be gym night, the stadium PA system during Friday night football games, senior <laughs> awards, or ultimately, ultimately a graduation where he may be the last person at Neshaminy you hear call your name. Mr. Deal is the ultimate perfectionist seen this time of year in the senior locker bank asking students how to pronounce their name to make sure he gets it perfect <laughs> at graduation. It is rumored that if you cut Mr. Deal's left arm it bleeds red, if you cut his right it bleeds blue. The final category is community partnerships. The qualities include empowering students to make a real difference in their community, serving as leaders for coordinating resources, provides opportunity for students to engage in meaningful service, facil facilitates student learning in community-based curricular and co-curricular events, demonstrates reciprocal partnerships to address community needs. The 2019 recipient, Mr. Neil French. As a social studies teacher, coach, and class, or student advisor at, at Maple Point Middle School, and a coach at Neshaminy High School, Mr. French has taken his role to the next level in every way. Events like Coaches Versus Cancer, the Martin Luther King Day of Service, as Mr. Copeland, or as Mr. Jones talked about in the working lunches uh, he has for his students during the day, and most recently, leading student athletes uh, in a Langhorne Cemetery to place flags for, for, for this weekend. Quoting Maple Point's principal, Mr. Sokol, Mr. French goes the extra mile for students in the community. Why? Because it's the right thing to do, and honestly, it's the only way he knows to do things. Thank you. If all five of you would come forward again for another picture. the 2019 Award for Excellence recipients. Please applaud again.
Uh, I have a second presentation on the budget. Not as exciting, but important. And so here, uh, I, I just want to run through, this is mainly information that was at our last May 8th Business Operations Committee meeting where uh, we returned after a month's work of trying to get our budget ready to be in its final phase. And so we do have a proposed final budget that's going to be acted on this evening, and I just want to run through what has happened since you've last heard at this public meeting information. Anyone who's been out to the committee meetings has heard this already. So we have a, a, a budget calendar. This shows that the calendar starts in January, but in reality, the board starts working in September with budget assumptions. And so the budget assumptions help guide the work of the school system in building the budget that then gets in front of the board in January. From January, after that point, we, with our proposed preliminary budget, we work to minimize and eliminate as much as possible any gaps in between the revenue and expenditures. And we're at that phase right now where we're reporting out on our final product, or at least the proposed final product. The last step of the process is in June when the actual budget itself is voted on. So this is the path uh, at the April 2nd meeting. After the proposed budget was in front of the board, we worked through February and March to find ways to reduce, I think I went, well, uh, so I think I'm missing a slide, but uh, in January we had an $8.5, $8.6 million gap uh, at the preliminary budget time. Uh, one of the things that the board has been doing is there's a committed fund balance for PEASERS. It has a limited amount of money, and we've been pulling $2 million out for the purposes of covering some of the added expenses of the PEASER retirement fund. We're reducing that amount to $1.75. So $250,000 less with the goal that we will at least reduce it each year by that amount of money because the money will ultimately run out before we can uh, ad address it if we don't begin to uh, peel back slowly. So that's part of this budget. In addition, there was a whole series of cuts that you can see from different categories. We reviewed this at a prior meeting and a revenue adjustment. This gap reduction of $3.6 million was presented in April and it left us with a $3.2 million gap. Unfortunately, right prior to that meeting, uh, the, the Oxford Valley tax appeal was put in front of the board and we knew that we would have an additional nearly $800,000 decrease to the anticipated tax revenue for this very upcoming year. So at the time of the April 2nd meeting, we recognized that as now working against our efforts to close the gap. And so rather than $3.2 million, that pushed us close to $4 million at that point. One of the things that we did talk about at the April meeting was that the Act 1 tax increase allowable for the community could raise $2.8 million. And we also talked about the fact that the 792000 surprise in terms of the reduction in tax appeal uh, may best be handled at this late date by looking to fund balance for this upcoming year and knowing that we have to figure out a way to address that reduction in revenue going forward. So that's how we left that meeting. And then it still, at that time, left us with $380,000. I'm, I'm squinting at my machine. My machine's very uh, fuzzy here. But three, about a $380,000 gap that we were looking to address at least that much for the May meeting. So at our May meeting that just happened recently, the $382,000 was addressed in two ways. One was there were some cuts to expenditures and some adjustments that we were able to make to some line items, and that resulted in another $118,000 being able to be found. And then there was also revenue adjustments, uh, not revenue cuts, but actually adjustments to revenue, increases in revenue. That's an increased number of $642,000. The largest increase there actually was, even though we were uh, experiencing the cut from the tax appeal, there is an increase in tax assessments across the district. And so that did help <coughs> to, to thwart or to, to soften, I guess, some of the impact of that. The extra money then in this line amounts to about $370,000 because it, we were able to wipe out the gap and have still $377-some thousand dollars to address and we were able to put that 
In the far right-hand column, this kind of shows the progression, these columns of the, how we've moved as time has moved on to this point. And so the, the rectangle that is orange in color shows that $792,000 at the April meeting. And so by the May meeting, we were able to get that down. And so we are only taking, I shouldn't say only, we're, we're taking from fund balance uh, a $400,000 number instead of what was nearly an $800,000 number. This is the final proposed budget. This shows uh, all of the revenue, all of the cuts. Uh, this does include an Act 1 tax increase. It does include the 1.75 use of fund balance for PEASERS. It does include the $400,000 from fund balance to address the tax appeal issue. Uh, but apart from that, we, we, we've moved to the point where our revenues and our expenditures are coming close to matching. That hasn't always been the case. And so we're working closer and closer to that point. We feel good about that. Uh, this is, presents a balanced budget to that degree with the use of those fund balance numbers. Any questions from the board? Okay, thank you. Okay, that brings us to our first public comment period. Ms. Burns. Mary Ellen Powell. Please identify yourself, where you live, and your occupation. Good evening. My name is Mary Ellen Pulak, and I'm a resident at um, Twin, the Twin Oaks section of Levittown, and I am a proud 20-year employee of uh, Nishamani School District. I have been an a, um, instructional assistant for 19 of those 20 years, and I'm very proud and pr happy with what I do. I'm here tonight, I was going to talk tonight about just explaining to you what an instructional assistant does, but yesterday all of the instructional assistants received a very disturbing email concerning snow days. And when I came to work today, everyone was very upset. Um, most of us are paid on a salaried um, pay basis. We get the same pay every pay for 22 pays. And um, being knowing that it's salaried, if, if I don't take my whole lunch, that's fine. You know, I don't expect it. And none of us do. I don't, I'm supposed to get two 10 minute breaks. I've never gotten a 10 minute break. Uh, it just doesn't happen. Um, I'm often have to stay late because a bus is caught in traffic. And I do. I'm here to support the children of um, th all the schools. I work at Albert Schweitzer and I'm very proud of where I work. All of us do that. We are each losing two days pay. It amounts for the whole district to less than $27,000. I'm sorry, but I think we're worth more than $27,000. I'm not asking you to pay me for work I haven't done. I'm asking you to let me do something else to let those of us who want to do something else so that we will not lose money that we are used to getting. It's close to the time that we're not going to get a, a pay for a set, two months because of, um, and this is the time that you're taking money away from us. I know I could give you valuable work for 12 and a half hours. A lot of us have to work more than one job, but we give 110% to the children every single day. Just today, I had to give up 15 minutes of my lunch, and I didn't think a thought, not nothing. Of course I would do it. A child needed me, and I was there for that child. And every person that I work with believes the same thing. We are the support staff, and we support Nishamani School District. Please help us.
Steve Rodas. Good evening. Uh, I'm Steve Rodas. I live in the Villages of Flowers Mill. Uh, first, I just want to congratulate each of the teachers who received an award this year. Uh, in truth, they work very hard. A lot of people don't appreciate what they do. A lot of uh, people who were against them in years past and took jobs as aides finally have found out how hard it is to be a, a teacher on a daily basis in the Chamonix. I think that the proposed budget is, is adequate for next year. However, there are some uh, thoughts that I'm going to come to. Uh, it's good that taxes will be raised as they should be. Right now, taxes are the only method to pay for the education of our children. Nobody likes taxes, but as Judge Oliver Wendell Holmes says, it is the price we pay for civilization. It is how we pay for our police and the armed forces, our public universities and local schools, scientific research, and Medicare. Taxes really do buy civilization. I urge you to please take care of the people, one of whom was here at the podium before me, these people who take care of the shamaning. They are the teachers and all the support staff, the bus drivers and the aides, and the kitchen staffs, and they really do take care of the shamany. And it's time that, uh, however you feel about the contracts, it's time to settle their contracts. I don't think the shamany uh, needs to stand to what they had in the past. I think it was outrageous what happened in the past, and I urge you to really to settle their contracts. Finally, you'll be glad to hear this. Uh, this is my final appearance before the school board. My wife and I will be moving over the summer to another district. I want to say that personally, I enjoyed every minute of all the meetings that I attended, and I would urge everyone of the public to come to all committee meetings, you can come start next week, and all the school board meetings. I think that I proved that your voice will be heard. All you have to do is come to the meeting and stand up and say it. Thank you. Thanks for the memories. Is there anyone who didn't sign up and wants to come to the podium? There is a second uh, public comment period, if not, so. Okay. That brings us to the routine matters section. I'd like to make a motion to improve item 2.01, the minutes, 2.02, treasurer's report, 2.03, check register and procurement card purchases, 2.04, budget transfers, 2.05, bids, 2.06, investments, and 2.07, exonerations. Can I get a second? Second. Second one, Mr. Kovitz. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Um, 2019-2020 approvals. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 3.01, appointment of the treasurer, 3.02, annual appointments for 2019-2020, 3.03, local, state, and national contract participation authorization for 2019-20, 3.04, newspapers of record. 3.05, depositories of school funds. 3.06, contracted services for 2019-2020. 3.07, contracted, transfer contracted transportation service for 2019-20. 3.08, facility and energy usage fees for 2019-2020. 3.09, petty cash accounts. 3.10, pro procurement card purchases. 3.11, competitive electronic auction bidding. 3.12, taxpayer bill of rights. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Hollenbeck. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions pass 7-0. Um, I'll read item number four, personnel administrative appointments. 
I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.01 Retirements and resignations resolved that the Chamonix Board of School Directors hereby approves the resignation of Stephanie Washam, Principal of Furtabar, Furtabar Elementary, effective July 1, 2019. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bowman. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Personnel certificated like to make a motion to approve item 5.01, retirements, resignations, and end of assignments. 5.02, leaves of absence. 5.03, revived, revived, revised, return some leave. 5.04, co-curricular appointments. 5.05, ancillary appointments. 5.06, summer school program appointments. 5.07, summer work appointments. 5.08, Summer Professional Development Appointments. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Boyle. All, uh, comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions pass 7 to 0. Personnel support, Mrs. Hollenbeck. I'd like to make a motion to approve 6.01, Retirements, Resignations, End of Assignments. 6.02, Leaves of Absence. 6.03, revi revised returns from leave. 6.04, appointments. 6.05, co-curricular appointments. 6.06, .06, ancillary appointments. 6.07, summer work appointments. 6.08, summer school program appointments. And 6.09, summer professional development appointments. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, 7.01, which is out of district placements, and 7.02, homebound instruction. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mr. Tobis. Comments or questions? Comments or questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions pass 7 0. Business operations, Mrs. Hollenbeck? I'm pulling out 8.04. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve 8.01, the 2019-20 proposed final budget, 8.02, the Bucks County Technical High School budget for 2019-2020, 8.03, BCIU number 22, special education contracted services for 2019-2020, 8.05, Contract with Bucks County Pass Program and 8.06 Sunday facility usage. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Bowman. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions pass 7 to 0. I'd like to make a motion for 8.04 acceptance of donation. Whereas the Neshaminy School District expects to receive donation from the Bucks County Board of Commissioners, Middletown Community Foundation, Lower Southampton Township, and Giant Food Stores for the 2019 Summer Planned Action Stimulus Success Program pass. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Neshaminy Board of School Directors hereby accepts the aforementioned donations. Can I get a second? Second. Second, Mr. Kovitz. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Okay. Anyone have any other board business? Okay. That brings us to the second public comment period. If you have uh, some comments, please approach the podium. Say your name, where you reside, and your occupation. Good evening, my name is Connie Esmont. I live in Langhorn and I am a bus aide in Neshaminy. I'm with Sue Monreal. She lives in Lower Southampton Township. She's also a bus aide. We're here tonight to talk about um, 
first off, now I want to back up. I want to thank Mr. Jones and the other executive or people who were at transportation a few weeks ago to uh, give the awards for longevity service at Neshaminy to the bus drivers. It was a very nice event to have our coworkers there so they could see their other coworkers getting their longevity awards. Um, it was a very emotional um, event, and I wish some of the board members could have seen it because there were a lot of stories of the drivers and, and what they'd been through. And with that being said, um, that's why we're here, to talk about what we're being going through this summer. As you know, we talked about a couple weeks ago that our pay for our jobs is being decreased by $5 for summer work when we're doing the exact same jobs we do all year long with the special needs children. We're just asking, these jobs are about 40 hours for the entire summer, four hours a day, four days a week. It's not like we're pulling 80 hour a week jobs. We're pulling 80 hours for the whole summer. So we're begging you, please reconsider what you're taking away from us for our summer work for 80 hours. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Approach the podium, state your name, where you live, your occupation. Andy Warren, Shady Brook Drive, uh, coordinator, Tullytown Borough. Uh, will it, will uh, Mr. Jones's slides be available? Oh, thank you. Just, to, just to, for further clarification, on our website, the board has a site the, that takes you to what's called board docs, and on that board doc site for Nishamini, all of the information that we have at committee meetings as well as this meeting is attached, any attachments, any PowerPoint. So you, you could not just find that PowerPoint, but you could go back to the May 8th meeting and see all the information that was given out at that time as well. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. My name's Jean Good. Um, I live in Unionville Barrow, Pennsylvania. No, geez. And I work here at Neshaminy School District. I'm a nurse health aide, and I go to many schools. Uh, I'm here to talk about the, a post that was posted on our Neshaminy Share Facebook on the 5th of May. And it was posted at uh, 7.20, I believe, something like that. <coughs> And parents got talking, and we heard this whole story, and a, a few of our kids were accused of reckless behave, recklessness on the roads, um, s damaging property. And I know that this is happening, and it's happening in Pendell, it's happening in Unionville, it's happening in Levittown, it's happening everywhere. But the postings of our children were put on there, and they were never involved in any of that kind of stuff. If they were, I, I, I know a lot of these parents, they wouldn't have bikes. I mean, they'd be gone, you know, not just taken away. And we work really hard to keep them, keep track of them and know what they're doing. And we hear things even from the kids about what is happening with other kids. They're not going to give names. They're not going to say what's going on. Everybody's sick of it. I'm sick of it. And my, my grandson who I raise is riding. So what is bothering most of the parents, and, and a few of them have something to say, is that it, they were just put up there as, it's not them, and they were put there. And there was one kid that, that was followed by a car. And, you know, and he felt like he was being followed and terrorized by this car. And as he went off into the gas station, the guy pulled up to him and you know, took his picture, and he said, smile, kid, took his picture. Okay, this kid is a National Honor Society student and one of my favorite kids in the world other than my own. He's um, a, uh, 
he's an athlete. He does <coughs> he travel soccer. He does track. He's on the student council. And I mean, and this is the kid that they focused on. I mean, that kid you know, just broke my heart that they had to focus on him. Probably one of the best kids in the school. And you know, he's going to be somebody. And I'm proud that he's one of my son's, my grandson's best friends. But it's something's got to stop. You know, I know it, it. I'm sure our kids aren't innocent either. I mean, they're sneaking. They're going to do stuff. They're boys. They're 13, and we understand that. But the problem is to put to post somebody's pictures up there that have nothing to do with anything that was going on on the Chamonix share, and it was removed. I think it was about. I'm trying to guess because I looked into it. I think it was removed about nine o'clock that night. And this woman was asking for, the woman was asking for anybody that knew anything to give her names and grades. And she also um, took, the post went down after 400 and some comments or replies. And what? Okay, well what we're concerned about, we want to keep the community safe from, from any kind of violent, or any kind of bad behavior, but we also want to protect our kids. And that's the most important thing. So, you know, they're kind of afraid to say anything, but we really want them to, you know, we want everybody, we want the community to be safe. We don't want this happening. So, you know, we just, I had decided that I would call uh, Langhorn Barrow and see if they would be here also just to just have something to say, but. All right, so I just wanted to let everybody know that the Neshaminy share page is not a district sponsored. It is not district owned. It is not district run. Um, it is run and owned by um, two women that are outside of the district. So that is not something that we would really have any control over if somebody is posting something privately. However, I did view it. Um, I was actually the one that got in touch with the people and told them, you know, due to confidentiality, you should not be asking for um, this kind of information on our students. Please take it down, and they did delete it. Um, I will talk to them about that. This really sounds like this is an issue that I would start attending the Middletown Township meetings to see what's being okay. addressed with your municipality and as far as, like, getting control of these kids on the bikes and, you know, the postings. But I know the police put their their pictures all over the blotters too, but that's not something that we would do here at Neshaminy as a practice. We really keep the confidentiality of our students private. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I apologize that you had to witness that, but I just wanted to let you know that that's not something that was done by anybody here at the district level. I was level. aware of that because it was Neshaminy share. I didn't realize that it there's was a number of Yeah, there's a number of Neshaminy pages that are run by, um, taxpayers, parents, it, there's a million of them. Yeah. The only one Facebook page is the one that's truly, it says Neshaminy School District, and you'll see most of the postings are from our um, PR guy, Chris Stanley, and they're run strictly by the school district. And we don't, we just make announcements and there's awards and stuff on there. We don't post that kind of thing right. on um, any district sites at all. But thank you for making okay. us aware. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you for making us aware. May I expand on that just slightly? Ms. Bowman um, actually made a comment about uh, the fact that the Middletown Township Police Department had actually posted some pictures. That means that they have seen and they have some documentation of some of these people, these people who have done these things and they want to identify them or at least try to identify them for doing things that they shouldn't be doing. Whether they are students of Neshaminy or not, they have been identified by the police department for the acts that they are allegedly, allegedly committed, <laughs> accused of committing. So uh, I just want to put that out there as well and expand on that just in that realm. So please, it is not something, and, and I agree with Cindy completely, that it is not a, a Neshaminy thing. 
we have an official website, we have an official Facebook page, and it is not something that we are putting out there. And please just consider that and be aware of that. So thank you. Hello. Uh, hello, my name is Lee Halters. Is that sounding okay? Uh, I live nearby uh, in the Summit Trace area. I'm a stay-at-home dad. My children go to Maple Point School. And I just want to uh, give a little informational support to what Ms. Good just told you. That This is about um, the rise of vigilantism, actually. I think that's what she was speaking about. Uh, after this, this uh, publicity about the the uh, the bike gang, we'll call it the loose bike gang. Um, people are feeling that they can uh, make citizens arrests or uh, accost students or children on the road on their bikes. So I'm giving you this information. My uh, my daughter, my son, and another girl from our neighborhood were riding their bicycles from Core Creek Park back to Summer Trace area, and they were not <laughs> in, you know, engaging in any bike gang activities, but someone sort of chased them down, accosted them, took their picture, gave them a stern lecture, held them at the side of the road, and uh, called my wife, but never gave her a name. And I just wanted that on the record, that's all. Thank you very much. I think, as Mr. Feather and Mrs. Bowman probably said, you guys may want to go to the township meeting because uh, it seems more like it may be more of a police matter than a school district matter. But thank you for making us aware. I just want to make a quick comment. Um, these bike gangs, as you call them, they're a group of kids that, you know, they may be Nishamini students, they may not be Nishamini students. Um, speaking as an emergency responder right now, um, if you do see a group of kids and you have a concern about them, please do not stop them. Do, don't pull over. Call the police if you have an issue. Um, again, I apologize, really not a district matter. Um, it's kind of outside of our jurisdiction as far as addressing it. Um, the elementary school and um, the middle school have bike programs and they do teach the kids about bike safety and helmets. Um, you just saw in our superintendent's report, how I believe it was Maple Point or Proquessing and Sandburg, and they went out on the bikes and they do take a bike ride. We do teach the kids bike safety. Um, but I'm really concerned at this point from what I'm hearing is that people are stopping and addressing our students that are out on bikes. And that really creates a dangerous situation. Number one, you're stopped in the street. You might spook the kid, they could fall off their bike. Um, you might say something that's inappropriate. So again, just to reiterate what Marty said, this really is a police matter. It sounds like you need to speak to Middletown Police, you need to speak to Pendel <coughs> Borough Police, and you need to start going to the Middletown Township meetings and expressing your concerns. Okay, but thank you for making us aware. Anyone else? Okay. Brings us to the board comment section. Anyone have any board comment? <laughs> you are. <laughs> Steve, we will miss you. <laughs> However, are, are you still going to uh, substitute here? Oh. So please, please, you can still please come to our meetings and let us know what's going on, especially when it comes to food services when you're standing in line forever. <laughs> now, but you've made us aware of some things that we really needed to focus on, so thank you. Anyway, I'm going to leave it very short, but thank you very much for everyone who came up and, and made us aware of some of the things that we should be paying attention to. And Steve, we will miss you, but thank you. Anyone else? I have one. Okay. 
Okay. So um, I don't know how this has happened, but uh, somehow Mr. Rodas has escaped our attention. And thank, because he comes every meeting, so it's hard to believe that he escapes our attention. But uh, we have a wonderful program that uh, allows for us to recognize people who do good work for our kids and for our community. It's a very simple program. We, we get nominations from across the district, people who say, hey, I really think this person exemplifies who the Neshaminy District wants as the adults working with our kids. And so we are able to then go out to the schools, uh, go out to the offices, go out to the transportation department, and, and recognize those people in front of their peers, in front of colleagues, uh, in front of kids, sometimes in front of the entire school body. Uh, so this was unexpected. We did not know you were moving. This was a surprise announcement. But Dr. McGee very carefully has secured the big gift. It's not a car that we roll in. It's not a big check that he gave out to the teachers earlier. But it's a pin that only people who gave the We Build Futures nomination and recognition award are able to acquire. And so we have a special We Build Futures pin for you, Mr. Rodas. Thank you so much for everything you've done. All right, if we have any, uh, no more board, I didn't say it yet. <laughs> Steve's not here, so I got to do a 20 minute comment. No. No. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? No one's opposed. Meeting's adjourned.